prestige pawnbrokers is part of an exclusive world. It's actually in excess of 120,000. <gasps> Where diamonds are disposable income. That's impressive. And luxury goods get swapped. I can get some big money for you. For wads of cash. I'm in the business of making money, and it doesn't matter if it's cars, boats, antiques, whatever it is, I want it. Five and six figure deals. You're probably looking at about a quarter of a million. A notched up daily. Got it. Another happy customer. This time. A mind-blowing bike. It's called Nutcracker. I think it's worth 25 grand. Big bling. If the clarity was as good in the diamonds, you're looking at well into millions. And has boss James... It's a fellow who's got a railway. ...finally gone off the rails. I just wanted to give it full throttle. ..with his biggest boy toy ever. Oh, God, I'm struggling with this. Welcome to the world... ..of posh porn. With trust in banks dwindling, more and more people are turning to pawn shops. I've maxed out my credit card. I have an overdraft in the bank and I know they will not extend me. As a result, the industry is growing by 8% a year in the UK. Pawnbroking is the easiest way of obtaining money. If you've got the right asset, you can walk out very quickly with the money. You're looking at sort of £728. And making his mark in the business is pawn shop owner James Constantino. James isn't your normal pawnbroking type of boss at all. Oh, I have some of that. James is the Peter Pan of the pawnbroking industry. He's never grown up. Working here sometime a bit like madhouse. With two shops in well-heeled Surrey and now a third in London's high-end Hatton Garden, James's eye for the extraordinary is paying off. It's all going at the moment. There's just a little bit going on in every room. And when you mix it all up, it's just one big... Porn pie. Hi, is that Magnus? All the staff at the pawn shop know that size isn't always everything. The price per carat will probably be in the in the low hundreds. But it's hard not to be impressed, especially by what could be one of the pawn shop's largest items to date. This is quite a thing. Look at that. It's a fellow who's got a railway for sale. Proper working railway, look. Oh, my God. Is that in his garden? That's in his garden, yeah. What, does the truck just go round and round, then? I don't know. Oh, my God, how nice is that? It's got a little cabin and everything. It's got everything you could want from a train. Oh, that's so nice. Imagine being able to have that in your garden. Very difficult thing to place. I mean, who's going to want that, really? I'd want it if I had a big garden. <sighs> yeah, but you... And grandchildren. And the money. And <laughs> money, yeah. <laughs> Deep in the heart of the Shropshire countryside, pensioner David is the owner of every little boy's dream. His own personal railway. Two locomotives, five coaches, a station, signal box, and just under two and a half miles of track. I was happy to go along with the building of the railway. I came to the conclusion that it was probably more expensive than a mistress, but at least he was here at home. To build the railway on my own has taken me the best part of t over 20 years, working full-time and doing it in the evenings and weekends. <laughs> Got to be well over 250. Yeah, nearly 300,000, I would say. It cost us over 300,000. Ideally, David and Janet would like £175,000 for the railway. Uh, one will never get the full value back. No, we never, we never and we expect wouldn't that. expect the no. full value back. It's just so that we can put it into uh, a care, <laughs> care home pot <laughs> <laughs> for future needs. Yeah. He wants to make sure it's fed more to date, Danny. Yes. <laughs> Selling a railway would be a brilliant coup for James, but such a unique item carries a huge risk. The difficult thing with the railway is that I would have to find a buyer before I offered a price for it. And finding a buyer for a thing like that in a market like this is almost impossible. Joe speaking. Hey. Opening a branch in London's jewellery quarter has boosted the company's big bling Hi. footfall. Hi. I have a five carat pear cut. That is gorgeous, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is lovely. Oh, fantastic. It's a lovely piece. Yeah. 
With more jewellery coming over the counter, Boss James has hired new assistant manager and gemologist, Michael. Becoming a gemologist was sheer chance, to be honest. I just had an opportunity to start studying diamonds and gemstones, and I took it, thinking it would be a hobby, and suddenly it became a, a full-blown career. All right, thanks. Thanks, James. Cheers. Today, James has decided to give his newest employee his biggest challenge yet. I've been really cautious about giving Michael high-end assets to appraise, but I thought now it's time to give him something really special to get his teeth into. So this, uh, this customer brought in this quite incredible 71 carats oval tanzanite, uh, and you've got loads of diamonds around. It's a really beautifully designed ring. This, this isn't really comparative with the normal tanzanites we get. The size is, is massive. If the clarity was as good in the diamonds, at the size you're looking into the millions. You can get lost looking in, into a stone like this. The Tanzanite ring belongs to 53-year-old Lucy. Are you still on that diet with no butter on your bread? No. OK and her youngest of two sons, 24-year-old Gareth. Cheers, lovely. No Can you put it straight in the washing machine for me? Yes. Great thing on your left. Ha, ah, very funny. I do all the cooking. <laughs> I do all the washing. I do all the hoovering. I do all the cleaning. Um, hmm. I see she's uh, one of contenders for best mum, yeah. I just... Disappointed I haven't got a mug saying best son, but oh well. No, but he's got stupidity is not an excuse. <laughs> That's why she's only a contender. <laughs> this mum and son live in South Wales along with Lucy's ten cats. Oh, come on, sweeties. Come on. I also go down to an industrial area every night and feed the colony of cats that I've done since 1999. Good boy. I don't even really like cats much, but I am... Um, I suppose. <laughs> Gareth goes out to, you know, quite a bit, so they're company for me. It's nice. Sadly, the last couple of years have left a void in Lucy's life. Dave was my husband. Um, he passed away two years ago in June. He died of cancer. He was a full-time soldier for 19 years, man and boy, and then he became a policeman. Great sense of humour, Dave. He was always the life and soul of the party. He was always wearing wigs out and dressing up, even when it wasn't a dress-up night, cos that's what he did. He was a, a, a bit of a fun guy. Sorry, Dave. Losing her husband prematurely has driven Lucy to take a leaf out of his book. I've devised my own bucket list. And the, the first thing I went and was had my ears pierced at the top, which was uh, quite adolescent. And then it was to go to Hyde Park and watch Party in the Park, which was brilliant last year. Well, then, um, way down on my bucket list was to go to New Zealand. And I've decided that I don't really want to wait. There are three generations of family out there that I have never seen, and I'd like to do that. Oh, my God, it's stunning. I mean, it's breathtaking, isn't it, really? Bushy. But the money Lucy needs for the trip is locked up in an impulse purchase made from a TV shopping channel two years ago. That's a nice one. A 71 carat Tanzanite ring. It was purely by chance. It was on the telly, wasn't and it? And then um, it was a one off where they had all the biggest gem weights that you could possibly think of. When I saw it, I thought that that's a piece I would invest in. That's, that's caught my eye. Gareth said, Go on, ma'am, go halves with me. I, I, I got to be honest, I didn't think. It was just like, OK, OK, I'll do it, I'll do it. And, and we did. A decision Lucy started to regret. Gareth wants it as an investment, a long-term investment. Gareth's got a lifetime to invest in and I've got a short lifetime to do the things I'd like to do. The last few years have taught me that instead of just planning things, just get on and do it. It's going to be a trip of a lifetime. You know, if I don't do it now, when, when am I going to do it? Um, I've decided, I've made my mind up, I'm going to go. To fund the New Zealand trip, Lucy wants to pawn the Tanzanite ring and is looking for a £10,000 loan. It's most definitely worth pawning so she can go now rather than later. I know it's somewhere she will love to go. This is for me. Primarily, it's for me. Sorry, just getting a little bit teared up there. 
Lucy's dream of crossing the globe now rests on how much the Tanzanite ring is worth. Opening their flagship store in Hatton Garden... I have a certificate and valuation of £7,200. ..has brought about a surge in people looking to pawn their precious metals for hard cash. It's almost on an hourly basis. It's incredible. But James's next inquiry, though silver and shiny, is something completely different. Oh, my God. Look at that. This is amazing. This bite's just coming. Have a look at that. Mental, isn't it? Wow. I'm going to try it out. Is that a proper bite? It's mad, Where's isn't it? the seat? It doesn't look comfortable. That's why it's called Nutcracker. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your seat. What? That is the thing. That'd be silly. Well, why what? do you think it's called Nutcracker, then? I don't know, but it because can't Because it be cracks of that. nuts. Think about it. The Nutcracker is the baby of 42-year-old Paul in Bognor Regis. I named it the Nutcracker just purely because it, it sort of drove me out the wall. A qualified engineer, it took Paul two years to build his bespoke bike using only scrapyard materials. I mean, there's not one part on it that is bought off the shelf. The hubs, the brake unit on the side of the engine, that's all manufactured in here. Been a labour of love. Yeah, you won't find another one like it anywhere. And its uniqueness has won Paul numerous prizes, including a place in the World Championships of Custom Bike Building. It was great. There was, I think, 80 bikes there in 24 countries, and we got number five, so I was really chuffed with that. But the prizes have come at a price. Oh. Is it all the time in the yeah. I don't spend all the time, I don't spend the all the time in the goes, do I? Yes. <laughs> Wife Manuela doesn't share his passion because the Nutcracker is one of 13 bikes Paul has handcrafted over the years. It's been a nightmare. I didn't say it's been a nightmare. It has been a nightmare. The next time I build, I won't spend too much time. Yeah, but you say that every time and it's <laughs> never different. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. We don't go anywhere, we don't see anybody. It takes over. He's just a, um, obsessive. It's, it's a thing of beauty. It's boring. <laughs> Actually, that's what it is, it's boring. <laughs> Paul and Manuela have four children between the ages of 17 and 26 and are budgeting for some expensive family events. Get to switch off your rear fog lights when the fog has cleared. We've got kids needing driver's licences and cars. Um, yeah, daughter's getting married. And from the sale of the bike, Manuela's hoping she'll get a break too. He's promised me that we can have a holiday after this. So wait and see. I don't think it's going to happen. I really don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> Paul wants the right price for his beloved bike. I think it's worth 25 grand. Well, I'd like to see 30 out of it, um, but I'll accept 25 out of it. Since he opened his first shop in Weybridge six years ago, James's empire has continued to expand. It's a good sized stone, actually. It is. We're looking at two and a half thousand. Now he wants to give his business a professional look across his three stores. We've got some high-end clients coming in with lovely assets and they don't want to be presented by a scruff in an old T-shirt and a baggy pair of jeans. So James has decided to impose a strict black and white dress code, but it's not proving popular. Is there any leeway on this black and white? So, like, you know, beige or cream kind of a pink, maybe a light pink? Why well, well, don't you email pink. over to me what you think is acceptable? Bearing in mind it's still got to be quite smart. We send you pictures. That striped blue shirt, like you've got. Yeah, we're not you like know, it. No. Well, hold on, do as he says, <laughs> not as he does. Yeah, but you know, you know, like, you know, like, like, which one? Well, that's not that's quite acceptable. It is light blue. You thought you had trouble with me? I've never done any of this. Is there anything else that anyone wants to touch on that they may have wanted to bring up? Look at this stripe. Blue stripes. Right, meeting adjourned, everyone. I brought in the uniform rule to smarten everyone up because they were looking a little bit scruffy. They didn't like my idea, but at the end of the day, I'm the boss and what I say goes. Prestige Pawnbrokers is known for dealing with exclusive items, but today is a first for James. He's in Shropshire to try out David's garden railway. You've got to admire a man who, who builds a railway in his garden. There's uh, just something amazing about that. You've got to take your hat off to him. 
Hi. 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 Hi
There's not a lot of money in that at all. One client hoping to cash in some of her stylish accessories is retired antique dealer Sylvia. I love sunglasses, especially if you're tired from the night before. It hides everything, doesn't it? I've lost count of how many I've got. I can almost wear a different pair every day. I love collecting. I get a kick out of it, especially if I get a bargain. And my biggest love, above anything else, is handbags. I just adore handbags. My bags are my babies. Her love affair with handbags began at an early age. It started because I needed a handbag to go on a date when I was 13. I think it must have been two pounds, and I've still got it. This is Christian Dior. It's soft as butter, this leather. And this one is so cute. I bought it in Florida and at an antique fair. This is what I bought recently. I can't remember how much it cost, but I thought it was cute. Over 60 years later, Sylvia has amassed a huge collection. I have 500 handbags in my apartment. Every colour, every size. Art Deco, there's Bohemian, suede, leather, patent, crocodile. I like Versace, Chanel. I definitely have favourites. There's no two ways about it. I don't tell them, though. <laughs> For 27 years, Sylvia ran her own antique stall at Alexandra Palace. It was hard work. I had to be up at four o'clock in the morning. I was always on my own. I'm a wheeler dealer. But Sylvia's wheeler dealer days are coming to an end. I have Parkinson, which unfortunately takes all your energy away. I feel that my life has been turned upside down. The progression of Parkinson's disease has made Sylvia think about the future, and she's decided to sell her treasured handbag collection. I need the money because I have four grandchildren, and hopefully they will all go to university. One is not a year old yet. I'm thinking ahead, and so I would like to pay for it. Ideally, I would be very happy to acquire £10,000, which would be go towards their education. It wouldn't pay for the whole three years, but it would pay quite a substantial lot. Despite their reluctance, the pawn shop staff have finally signed up to the black and white dress code. Probably be better if you could send us some pictures of it first. But some are still struggling to meet the boss's high standards. Norris, those trousers are making them look more and more like Simon Cowell each and every day, mate. This is absolutely jealousy. These are going to fall buttons. Oh, that's true. Because you might have to check for a new clothing allowance. <laughs> buy some decent trousers. I don't think there's any check that can sort that out. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, James. Cheers, Simon. Whilst the bulk of the pawn shop's items get appraised on site, boy toy lover James likes nothing more than getting out of the office. Today he's visiting Paul and his Nutcracker bike. We've got a lot of contacts for deal in classic and vintage bikes. This is a little bit odd because it's handmade, it's a one-off. This thing looks absolutely amazing in the pictures. I can't wait to get down there and have a look. Paul wants to sell the bike and hopes James will be impressed enough to find him a buyer. Hi, Paul. How are you? James. You all right? Nice to meet you, fella. How you doing? I'm all right, buddy. Oh, that's amazing, isn't it? And this is all hand-built by yourself, is it? It is indeed, yep. It's pretty much a one-off machine. And what's the frame? The frame is stainless steel. And this exhaust is all handmade, all yep. fabricated Bins. by yourself? Yeah. Tell me, is this the seat? It is the seat, yeah. Is this why the bike's called Nutcracker? No, it's not. Oh. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> What's the longest you've driven this thing? Not very far. It, it is primarily a show bike. Sort of gobsmacked. <laughs> it sounded absolutely incredible. It made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. It feels so good. I thought, actually, I'm, yeah, I'm feeling this. I'm getting into it. And I realised there must be someone out there for it. So what are you looking for? I'd like 30 out of it. I'll accept 25. So bottom line is 25. Bottom line is 25. I'm going to go to work on it, mate, and I'll do my best okay. for you. OK. Thanks for today. Thanks for coming round. Cheers, mate. No worries. Take care. 
This is not going to be an easy sell by any stretch of the imagination. But there's got to be someone out there under some rock somewhere uh, who would love to own this. Um, and I've just got to unearth them. Specialising in high-end goods often means weird. Bloody hell. We don't see that every day. Wonderful. Wow, they're pretty pert, aren't they? Pretty what? Pert. And one-off items come through the pawn shop's doors. This was a bullet hole through Ronnie Craig's head. I see. But while exclusivity often means big money... Now, so how do you get to the figure of 25 grand? ..it can also mean major headaches. The problem with the unique item is trying to value it. You've got nothing to compare it to. And then trying to find a buyer, that is really difficult. At the pawn shop's headquarters, Boss James has been challenged with two of his toughest prospects to date. Well, look, I can liaise with the owner. If you we pencil in some uh, dates and we'll get them down there to have a look and then we can play it from there. James has sourced a specialist to help with David's locomotive. But for the Nutcracker bike, James is trying to find a buyer all on his own. Well, it is that thing, that Nutcracker is truly amazing. You can't ride it, it's an ornament. But he's spent so much time on it. It's a phenomenal thing. But you think it's more for the American market? As an ornamental piece, don't sound too dear, does it? And he said, oh, this has come fifth in the world. 25, 30 grand ain't too out of the way. I spoke to everyone there was to speak to. And to be honest with you, at the end of it, I realised why it was called the Nutcracker. It did do my nutting. Oh, God, I'm, I'm struggling with this. I really want to find a buyer for this. Either that or have it down here. I wonder if we get it through the doors. It was like one of those light bulb moments. Excuse me, I'll save your play. Move your ass and walk this way. <laughs> Please be in here. <gasps> Do you know what? I've misplaced that three times today. Give myself a heart attack. What are you doing? I'm just thinking, you know the nutcracker? We might have to get it down here. To go where? In oh, here. here. we go. Well, You're yeah. You're winding me up. No, I'm not. I thought he'd lost the plot. Woohoo, <laughs> curly whirly cuckoo. Do you know what you need to do? Remove all the stuffed animals in the front. No one touches the stuffed animals. You could put it in the window. Then you've got passing trade. You ain't got passing trade in our office. I'm going to phone the fella and get it, see if he can bring it down to us. I couldn't get my head round the fact that he wanted the Nutcracker bike in our office between myself and Joy. We would be the only two people that are going to see that bike. Put it out there, look. We well, can put it out there. It'd There's be nice. There's a nice big space well, when that's I can't that see it from there. Oh, you want to see it? I'd like to see it. Oh, God. Well, that'll be it then, wouldn't it? What? I said, well, that'll be it then. It'll be there. Joy, got a big motorbike going to be put in front of you. Do you think it's a good idea, Joy? Come on, Joy. <laughs> yes, wait one second, I'll just transfer you through. At the pawn shop's head office in Hatton Garden, Michael's been evaluating Lucy and Gareth's 71 carat tanzanite ring. I was really pleased with Michael's appraisal of a tanzanite, but with something as unusual, it's really, really important to get a second opinion. With a £10,000 loan at stake, James is taking the ring to jewellery expert Ian. Ian really loves his coloured stone, so I'm going to pop in and see him, just so he can give me a value on it and see if we can get a deal done for the client. Hi. Hello, James. You all right? I haven't seen you for a while. No, you're just too nervous to come in. And here's a take advantage of you. Well, you know, there is that, I suppose. Oh. I've got something you might like. Really? I bet you have. But what about that? Oh, my God, fathers. Do you like that? Wow. What an amazing colour. Mm. Tanzanite. 71 carats, I'm told. Oh, my God, look at the shank. It's absolutely fabulous. I love this work. Yeah, it's quite an unusual thing to come in at such wow. a size. The beauty about these Tanzanite stones is whenever you look at them, they always look different. Mm. Well, you know, from what I can see, there's no real signs of heat treating. Yeah, I'd say it's perfectly correct. At one time, you know, this would have been, like, between... Five and eight hundred pounds a carat. Yes. It has dropped in price. So why is that? No, just, fashion. just one of the gone out of fashion. But it will go up. All the big stones have disappeared. There's no more coming out of the mine. So I should tread on the side of caution with this one then. 
Absolutely, my darling. Absolutely. Lovely my darling. to see you well, again. Yeah. It's good to see you again. Oh, she'll see you soon, yeah? Yes. Be good. Behave yourself. Oh, of course. You know me. <laughs> The interesting thing about this ring is that uh, big stones are becoming rarer and rarer. And in time, this tanzanite could be worth a hell of a lot of money. The only problem is, are we going to be at the money she needs? I don't know. Most of the pawn shop's clients bring or send their items into one of the three stores. Right. Back of the hill. Here, please? But occasionally, the personal touch is required. See you later, James. See you. Today, James is sending the shop's bag expert, Patrick, to look over Sylvia's huge collection. She's got 500 bags. We don't know quite what's there. It could be a wasted journey, but then again, amongst that little lot, there could be a real little gem. We just don't know until we get there. She's mentioned a few designers. There's a few things that I've never even heard of before, so it's got to be quite, um, shall we say, challenging. Hello. Hello. Who's there? Hello, Hello. 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 Hello, how are you? Lovely nice to, to see you. Yeah, I spoke to you on the phone, didn't I? Yes. Wow, that's a, <laughs> that's a collection, it's a small isn't it? Small collection. So I'll go, yeah, this one here. So this open is... It. Open it, open it. How old is this then? This is... I think this is about 1920. Yeah. I mean, maybe just slightly earlier. This is a Charles Jordan. Oh, is it? Well, that's vintage, isn't it? Mm. There's so much work on all these. It's quite amazing, really. These are very specialist bags. This, this is really for a, a very specialist auction. Overall, there's specialist vintage dealers that would like these bags, and that's really what I've got to go and find. And there's a lot of American buyers out there that will buy this, but it's tracking down the American buyers, so it's not a five-minute job. So this one I'm going to take. You have to wrap it in cotton. Yeah, I'm taking this little green one here as well. Yeah. What about the little white Judith Lieber? Should we take no. that? You don't want that one to go? No. I have to say, at the back of my mind, there's a sense that I don't think she really wanted to sell the bags. They're her little babies. But I need to take some just to show yes, you. Yes, I you know, understand. I need to see. What uh, and you can't give me all the boring you can come ones. Come into I... the bedroom. I've got some there. Yeah, they all say that to me. Oh. When you're a high-end pawnbroker. Morning, Jake. You're all right, mate. Morning. A rich client base and professional contact list is vital for closing deals on large items. You can have your 90 grand. To help find a buyer for David's £175,000 railway, James has engaged train expert Patrick. What he doesn't know about light railways isn't worth knowing. If there's one man in the country to get that railway sold, it's him. Oh, look at that. Good grief. I, I'm amazed. It's all kind of bigger than I was expecting to be. Well, we'd best take a closer look, I think. Right. <laughs> Something completely different. I've not seen anything quite like this before. I, I couldn't fault the craftsmanship and the innovation technically. It's cutting edge stuff. The train set is it's almost a prototype development vehicle for something much bigger. Once he's inspected the mechanics, Patrick has seen enough to make a judgment. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, well, I'm David, thank you for showing me your You're welcome. Time to report back to pawn shop boss James. Prestige. Uh, is that James? Patrick, how'd you get on? I have to say it was a much bigger and more substantial and more robust set of equipment than I had thought it was going to be. What do you think its usage might be? Is it a private person or is it commercial? The loco, I think, potentially could have commercial possibilities. So that broadens the possible scope of potential buyers. So okay. That's a definite so positive. No, oh, fantastic. Thanks for your time, Patrick. Thanks a lot. All right, then, James. Take care. Cheers, mate. Right. Bye. 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 Well, that's good. It's a train guy, Patrick. It's all looking pretty positive. You trying to tell me we're all on the right track? It's full steam ahead. This sounds like it's just a ticket. Woo-woo! <laughs> 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 oh, we're full steam ahead, Michael. And I'm paying for this chaos. In the Hatton Garden branch, bag expert Patrick is appraising a sample of Sylvia's 500-strong collection. I've done that one. He needs to come up with a valuation and potential buyer for her lifelong loves. A lot of these haven't got any makes on them at all, so when they're not actually branded, it's very hard to do the research on them. A lot of these are just one-off bags. 
I think the film industry and the TV industry would like to be the wardrobe departments would actually probably like to buy things like this because I mean they can rent these things out in period pieces to a film company you know they might get you know maybe 20 pound a day or 30 pound a day for a bag to be hired out and she might get her money that way so it's another idea that I'm working on Mm -hmm. Yeah, good afternoon. I wonder if you can help me. Do you buy costumes and props, uh, handbags and things like that at all? Uh, I've got a lot of vintage bags. I've got about 500 that a client's got. And it'd be like, perfect for sort of uh, a wardrobe company to buy. If I had to do all 500 bags, it would probably take the best part of six months. After bringing in the expert, James has reached the end of the line with David's Garden Railway. This railway has been a real test for us. I mean, talk about nigh an impossible task. We've uh, been through the mill with it, to be honest with you. And now it's a matter of us really getting on to David and telling him the news. If it's good news, well, I shall thoroughly enjoy my cup of tea. If it's not good news, I shall still thoroughly enjoy my cup of tea. <laughs> Five. David, it's James from Prestige. How are you? Hello, James. Very well, thank you. And you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. How's the train? Still? Still, still. Still, still chugging along? Still going along well, well, yes. Well, look, David, as you know, we've been working hard on it and uh, we've had a couple of people that showed a lot of interest. And Patrick had made contact with some people that were very interested in your particular railway. And when we heard about them, you know, we were jumping up and down here. But unfortunately, that fell flat on its face. So, as it stands... Uh, we haven't got someone for it, unfortunately, David. Well, that's all right, James. Well, look, all I can say to you is that we know about it. We know you've got a little bit of time. And uh, we will keep working with it. Well, that's uh, very good of you to try anyway, James. And uh, on behalf of Jan and myself, thanks for your uh, hard work and uh, trying to succeed in finding us somebody. Lovely. OK, David, thanks a lot. Sorry, I couldn't help. That's fine, thank you for your time. Cheers, David. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You know when you meet someone who's really, really, truly lovely, you know, you really want to try a little bit harder for it. I don't think there's anything more I could have done to bring someone to the table. In the short term, continue maintaining everything. Ready for a yeah. prospective purchase. Onward and upward. Continue onward and upward. And as long as we're above the ground. That's it. <laughs> So, uh, what more can one ask? <laughs> and we've got each other, and the railway. <laughs> In London's Diamond District, James is still trying to crack the nutcracker. At the moment, it's looking pretty tough. A bit of a disappointment that I haven't got anyone. I love that nutcracker so much. If it was a bit cheaper, but then I'm of the opinion it's well worth 25 grand. So to insult him with an offer of 15 grand, which really, if I was to buy it, that's where it needs to be. Will I insult him? I don't think so. But then again, I might. I don't know. Uh, let me see how I feel in a couple of days. Pawn shop's headquarters in Hatton Garden, office manager Joe is making use of a quiet five minutes. Have you smelt these foam wipes? Not the foam wipes, no. Really nice. Yeah. I know what you put in your Christmas stocking. Anyway, just using one of yours for my private mobile, all right? Perks of the job. Little sneaky foam wipe now and again. You don't mind, do you? In Bognor Regis, nutcracker creator Paul has been waiting for James to find him a buyer for his bespoke bike. If the bike sells, I think my wife will be the happiest one. She'll have some bits to spend on the house. Um, kids for the driving tests, my daughter getting married, and some more toys for me. Paul wanted a minimum of £25,000 for his handmade motorbike, and James finally has some news. Hello. Paul. James, how you doing? Good, good, yeah, I'm good. Uh, look, as you know, we've been working away. I've contacted everyone and their dog about this thing, and... Yeah. But the feedback we're getting is that the bike... ..is probably worth what you want for it. Yeah. 
Um, but bringing someone to the table is proving quite difficult. But I've got two options for you. Right, now, okay. We can advertise the bike. And try and return you the 25 grand. Yeah. Or we would buy it. But it would be a, a quite a lot less than the 25 right, grand. Okay. We'd be up to 15,000 on it. No, I think for me it's the first option, mate. Fantastic. I'll keep you posted, yeah? yeah? Great news, mate. Cheers. Okay, mate. Thanks, Thanks very much, James. Cheers, Cheers Paul. Mate. Thank you. I was really upset when Paul turned down my offer of £15,000 for the Nutcracker. I was really eager to get that bike in, but I would have probably done the same in his shoes. Hello, Michael speaking. Pawn shop bag expert Patrick is on his way to see Sylvia. He's been searching for a buyer for her 500 handbags. It's been a long time coming to get to a decision on these bags. Hopefully she'll be pleased with the news that I have to give her today. To help towards her grandchildren's university education, Sylvia wants £10,000 for her cherished collection. Hello, Patrick. How are you? Oh, you look lovely. Oh, you say that to all of Oh, I do. Well, it's lovely to see you again, Sylvia. As you know, after one been all... Really having a good look at all these bags yes, going through. Yes. You really do have an amazing collection. Mm -hmm. Very, very unique, I have to say. Yeah. We still don't don't have anyone to take the whole collection off you. Mm. And to be fair, I think there's a, quite a few there you don't really want to part yeah, with know. either, is it? So, I know my I babies. They, well, they are, and I know there's a lot of memories there yes, for you, yes, which is lovely. Yes. And I can understand why you don't want to part mm. with them, and that's fine. However, now, there are some bags there that I've identified that I would like to buy, mm -hmm. if I can prize them out. Oh, I will see about that. <laughs> so I'm happy to give you the price you've asked for mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully, you know, uh, for both of us, it's a win-win. You get to keep the bags oh, that you I really see. want, okay. and you get to sell the bags that we want to buy. No. So you've got some money for your grandchildren. Okay. Is that clear, all right? Yes, let's, yeah. let's do it. All right, the grand, I'm definitely yeah. happy to buy them. Yes, yes. Okay, great. Deal. <laughs> It was always going to be a struggle to get one buyer to buy such a diverse collection of bags, especially really as Sylvia never really wanted to part with the bags anyway. But finally we've agreed to buy 15 bags of her for £500. She's happy and we're really happy. I love this bag. I really do. I'm very pleased that I haven't sold them all, because I would be devastated. And then what will I do with the holes on the wall? This one is gorgeous. In Hatton Garden, Michael has a decision on the £10,000 loan Lucy wants against her 71-carat tanzanite ring. It's been a tricky one since it came in into the buyer's market, and in like, recent years, whilst there is a lot of popularity, uh, sometimes the price does go down, especially with these larger stones. Hopefully we can, uh, we can still come to some sort of arrangement. Yeah, feeling a bit anxious. So riding on this phone call, and whether or not I'll be able to go to New Zealand. Hello. Lucy. Hello. Is that Michael? It is. Yes. I'm sure you're aware. Why I'm calling? Yes. The, uh, get an idea of where we're coming from. Okay. You know, the market for Hans Night at the moment is is tricky. It's become so, such a popular stone. Yeah. The market is almost saturated. Yeah. But obviously what you're needing is money quickly. To that end... Yeah. You know, is that we could offer a loan at the moment for for the 10,000 that you're, lo you're looking for. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I, I'm thrilled. I can now go into, into my travel agent and, and start pricing it for real. Yeah, yeah. Chuffed about that. Well, we can actually help with this. Michael, I do appreciate it. Great, thanks. Take care, lovely. Thank you. Bye. Michael is basically giving me the opportunity of doing something that I didn't think I ever thought possible to do, and that's that's got to make me feel really good about it. Really good. At the end of the day, it was, it was all about her. So she's happy. I'm happy. At the moment, it feels pretty good. It feels pretty good. Yeah. Hi, is that Mona? Lunchtime in London. Prestige. And James has received a surprise call from Nutcracker owner Paul. You need the cash urgently, do you? You want to sell the thing at 15 grand, you want to sell it? Initially, we were refused James's offer, but it's the time. It could have taken a month to sell, it could have taken a week, it could have taken a year. 
So James' offer seemed quite um, a good offer in the end. Cheers, bye. I didn't ever think that Paul was going to accept my offer of 15 grand for the bike, but when he phoned back, I was jumping up and down for joy. And Paul's U-turn has also pleased long-suffering wife Manuela. The fact that he accepted the 15,000 rather than the 25 that he wanted was a shock, but to have it gone <laughs> is a bonus in itself. <laughs> Where do you actually want to put an art bit sorted? I've only really got here. <laughs> Where about in here? Um, well, I was just thinking there. <laughs> really? <laughs> Looks better every time I look at it, Paul. It's fantastic. Lovely. Sure. Fantastic, Paul. Drop Cheers. Brilliant. James might be pleased, but his right-hand woman, Jo, has no idea of her boss's recent acquisition. <laughs> what is this? What do you think? James, oh, no. we've just created all this space. Have a sit on it. Go on. Take your coat off and your bag. You've got big buttons on that. I don't want any scratches on this. That's it. Hold the steering wheel. I have to strengthen the springs on it. Well, now that I've got it. Yeah. Charming. What is this all about? I bought it. What, without getting a buyer at the other end? I know, it's a bit reckless, isn't it? But you know what? Sometimes <laughs> you in life. You did this with the horse. Now you've got this. I could not believe that he paid £15,000 for that bike without having a buyer lined up. I was gobsmacked. I hope someone can sell that for him. So do I. <laughs> no. I know James runs this company and it's his business, but there is no way that bike is staying there.